Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome, horrific science teacher. In this video, we are going to be talking about biomes. So I'm not sure if you've ever actually noticed, and don't say anything to anybody because it's like a big secret, but it turns out that the earth is not the same everywhere you go, right? I know that's like shocking and stuff, but there are differences in the surface of the earth in the environments, depending on several factors such as the climate, and the location and the amount of uh, rainfall and you know the kinds of things that live there, the biotic and abiotic factors, which I talk about in a, another video. So scientists being the uh, obsessed with categorizing things that they are, they classify the different environments into five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, things that we call biomes. Okay, so what is a biome? A biome is a fancy sciencey word that means exactly what I just explained, a environment that shares a lot of similarities and traits with other parts of the earth that are considered to be the same biome. So there are five biomes that we generally talk about in science. And these five biomes are forest, okay, grasslands, deserts, tundra, and aquatic. So those are five biomes. So all of the forests on the earth share a lot of similar traits. And you probably already know what a forest is. That's something you're probably very familiar with. And if I were to take you and plop you into a forest randomly, I like pull you out of your seat and I blindfold you and I'm like, let's go for a ride. And then I push you out of the car, see you later and drive off my wheel spinning as I leave you. You're going to look around, you're going to take your blindfold off and you're going to look around and be like, Mr. Bertosh left me in a forest. You're going to know immediately where you are. Okay, likewise. If I take you to a desert and I push you out of my car and uh, you fall into the sand and then I speed off in my car and my wheels spin and I drive away and you take your blindfold off, you're going to know immediately that you are, in fact, in a desert. It, it, you're, no one's going to have to tell you you're in a desert. You're going to be like, oh, sand everywhere. This is a desert. You, you won't know which desert or what part of the earth I left you in, but you will know that you are in one of the Earth's deserts. Okay, so characteristics, traits, make each biome the way it is. Let's talk briefly about each biome. So let's start with forest. Okay, what is a forest? How would you describe a forest? When I ask you what is a forest, or I say think of a forest, imagine, imaginarate, imaginify a forest in your head, what are you imaginarating? What are you imagining in your head? Probably you're thinking about trees and little forest woodland creatures like raccoons or woodchucks. You're wondering how many wood could they chuck? Maybe. Uh, you're thinking about beavers and deer and moss and rocks and maybe your forest you're imagining is mountainous. Okay, that's a forest. Lots of trees. And there are different kinds of forests. We can we can sub uh, break that down. Sub break that down as a word. We can subcategorize forests uh, based on other more specific traits. Like are they cold or are they warm? Cold forests tend to be evergreen forests with lots of pine trees. Really warm forests might be a rainforest 
And kind of in between, uh, we call it deciduous forest. And they tend to have a lot of deciduous trees, which are trees with leaves, leafy trees. Um, and, you know, they might gradually change from one kind of forest to another as we move around the earth. So forests cover about 33%, about a third of the earth's surface. So if I push you out of my car or drop you out of a helicopter, because that's faster, uh, somewhere on the earth, odds are 30% if it's on the land. So I'm not talking about the ocean. I'm talking about the land. 30%, 33% of the earth's land surface. Odds are 30% that you're going to land in a forest. Okay. So let's now move on and talk about a desert, which is where I am from <clears throat> originally, because I'm from Utah. I'm from the great western desert of uh, North America. So deserts are places that get very little rain. And this lack of rain can be caused by their latitude. It might be caused by the fact that they're in a rain shadow from a giant mountain. So as the rain clouds go over a giant mountain, the mountain pushes them up higher and squeezes them out like a sponge and all their rain falls on one side of the mountain. And then as the clouds continue over to the other side of the mountain, they're out of water. And so that other side of the mountain doesn't get very much rain. So it's a um, rain shadow that a mountain creates. Okay, and uh, it might be caused by the side of the continent that uh, the land happens to be on. So deserts are places that get very little water. Some, almost no water. Some, like the Sahara Desert, are can go years with no rain. And they're very sandy. And there's almost no plants. Others, like the Great American Desert, get uh, might get some rain now and again. And so there might be some plants, like uh, some cactuses and cacti. That is the plural of cactuses. Cacti. Uh, or, you know, a few other sagebrush and things that are a little bit more tolerant. Uh, they just need a little bit of water. And they might have some life in them, like lizards and things. Okay, and then others are semi-arid, uh, like where I'm from in Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake Valley. Uh, it doesn't, it can actually sustain trees and things, but it's still very, very, it's not foresty that can sustain some trees in some places, but it's still very dry. So that's a desert. Okay, well, grasslands are kind of halfway between because you don't just go randomly. I mean, it's not like the desert goes and then plop, it's, now it's a forest. Okay, it gradually shifts from desert to forest. And in between, we have this thing called a grassland. A grassland covers about, this time it's not a third, it's about 20% of the uh, Earth's land. And uh, grasslands are categorized by a middle, a middle bit, that's another great word, of uh, a middle bit of a little bit, maybe that would be better of uh, rain. They have enough rain that they're not sand and they're not just, you know, dry uh, earth. There is grass, but there's not enough rain to sustain trees. So the grasses cover thousands and thousands of square miles and just go on and on. This is a great place to do a farm, by the way, because there tends to be really good soil in a grassland. This is where most of the Earth's farms are, is in grasslands. So grasslands are these big, vast prairies or savannas where there's uh, grass growing, and they sustain a lot of life, like birds, a lot of uh, bigger animals that eat grass, like deer and elk and elephants and wildebeest and American bison and moose, moosen, meesen, whatever the plural of moose is. I think it's just moose. Uh, and uh, all of these big uh, her herbivores, plant eaters. And there tend to be lots of predators hiding in the grasslands because they eat the herbivores. So you might have lions and uh, cheetahs and bears and things in the grasslands. Okay, so about 20% of the Earth's surface 
is grasslands. Then that leaves us with 13% that we haven't talked about yet of the Earth's surface. So a small amount is divided between two, the last two biomes. And the first one is tundra. And that covers about 10% of the land, the surface, land surface area of the Earth. Tundra is frigid, cold, freezing. And we divide tundra, we can subdivide it between tundra and taiga, but both of those are considered part of the tundra biome. Taiga might have a little bit more life, uh, like might have some evergreen trees, whereas tundra is just always super de duper cold. Uh, it is uh, categorized, it is known for having uh, what is called a permafrost, which is a layer beneath the Earth's surface that is always frozen, that never thaws, and it has some life. In fact, if you're in the ocean, it has lots of life. That's where most of the ocean life is, is in the tundra area. Uh, but on land, it has very little life. You know, there's some penguins and some polar bears and some arctic foxes and things uh, but it tends to be pretty sparse as far as life goes not very many plants not very much life very very cold and the further north or south you go the colder it gets well we still have three percent and one more biome to talk about three percent of the surface of the earth that is and that is aquatic so 3% of the land is covered by aquatic uh, environments, and that's swamps and rivers and lakes and ponds. And the aquatic uh, biome also extends into, and actually is the largest biome on Earth, even though it's only 3% of the land, because 70% of the Earth is ocean, and that is also the aquatic biome. So even though it's only 3% of the land, it's actually 70% of the total Earth's uh, surface, and more than that, like 71%, okay? And that's the aquatic. That's all the things that live in the water and the things that, uh, the fish and the plants and things that live in the water. So these five biomes are very distinct and again i could plop you in them blindfolded and you could take off your blindfold and you would know immediately where you were especially if it was tundra before you got your blindfold off because you'd freeze You'd be like um probably he dropped me in tundra this time that mean jerk because uh, i'm very cold well hello thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website, which is Handsome Science Teacher, because I mean, look at this face, HandsomeScienceTeacher.com, where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos, because well, you already have access to those, right? They're free, but also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me, where we, where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from 5th through 8th grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel. That helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.